All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through creating a very highly accurate uh, collision mesh that's very low poly for very high quality uh, meshes without using any third party tools. So we're going to do this all inside of Unreal Engine. So obviously the main use case for this is if you have uh, nanite quality meshes, which are often multiple millions of polys, and you want to have a very accurate collision mesh that is maybe a few hundred or a few thousand polys rather than using the complex collision, which is actually going to use the uh, multiple million polys of the mesh to calculate collision. Now, um, obviously for cinematics and things like that, uh, you can probably just get away with uh, complex collision, but it's always good to keep as much um, uh, performance in check as possible. And obviously we're building like gameplay or doing any kind of uh, simulation or, or particles or anything like that that involves collision. It's much better just have a highly accurate uh, lower um, quality collision mesh. So I'm going to show you how to do that all within Unreal Engine. And I'm going to also mention some of the other techniques that uh, you might more commonly use and why this is going to be a better uh, method for doing this. So I did import an asset from the Fab Marketplace, and it is raw quality, which is the highest quality that you would want to use for Nanite. So if I hover over the mesh, you can see here that it is um, just under 2 million polys. And then the textures are going to be 8K, which you can see about uh, two thirds of the way down this uh, contextual pop-up. And you can see the poly count for the mesh about halfway down this contextual pop-up. Now, in order to get uh, assets off of Fab, you can obviously Google that, but uh, you just click on this little Fab icon here. If it's not showing there, that means the plugin's not enabled. So you go to Edit Plugins and look for Fab and enable it and then restart the editor. So once you click on this, you can go into the Fab Marketplace. The window will pop up. And then uh, the sorting and filtering and trying to find assets is not quite as convenient as it used to be in Quixel Bridge, for example. But if you want to find Quixel assets specifically, because now everything is merged together, Sketchfab assets, you know, standard marketplace assets, Quixel assets, you can uh, load up the Fab window, click on the little hamburger menu at the top left, and then click on 3D assets, for example. And then in the search bar, type in Quixel. And then it'll bring all the Quixel assets up, and then it also has little uh, filter tags at the top where you can kind of drill it down to be a little, little bit more like uh, Quixel Bridge. It's still not quite as intuitive or convenient, but uh, that does help a little bit. So this specific asset I downloaded, I'm going to load this up real quick by double-clicking on it. You can see that it is a, uh, once again, 2 million poly uh, asset, and it has a bunch of... Um, convex uh, details to it, meaning that the it goes inwards rather than just going around, like if it were just a rock, for example, uh, something like this uh, stone here, it wouldn't have any um, of those uh, convex uh, details. Um, now, another thing to note about this mesh, and I specifically chose it for this reason to also show you how to get around this, is that it is open uh, on the bottom. So a mesh that is open means that uh, obviously it hasn't, it's not fully enclosed. Now when you create collision, this can cause an issue because the mesh doesn't exactly have a thickness to it. You can always create a uh, physical material to um, change that and, and give it thickness, but out of the gate, if you just want an enclosed collision, I'm gonna show you how to do that as well, okay? So um, one thing that you can do in Unreal Engine, and this is probably uh, where you think uh, this video might go for the reduction, is if you go into LOD zero and you go into reduction settings, you can actually do a reduction here. Now you can do the termination method based on uh, triangles, vertices, or either. And then you would give it a percentage of that original triangle count and it'll reduce it uh, to that amount. So for example, I go in here and I type 1%, it'll drop it down to uh, roughly 20,000 polys. Um, but the problem with doing that with such a high density mesh is going to take a very long time. The processing time for that to do that using this method uh, will be almost as long as this entire video. And I'm going to let this video run on in uh, real time throughout so you can see how long each uh, process actually takes. And I'm on a uh, you know Core i9 laptop with a 4090 and 32 gigs of RAM. It's a high-end gaming machine. Um, so it's going to move pretty quickly. Um, if you're on a, a high-end uh, desktop with similar specs or even like using one of the latest uh, uh, 50 series cards, whatever it is, um, it's going to affect obviously how quickly it does these things. But uh, that just kind of gives you a benchmark for how quickly all this is working. Now, you do have other collision generation methods. So if you go to collision here, you can do sphere capsule box simplified collision, or you can do X, Y, and Z 10 uh, DOP collision. You can also do 18 and 26 DOP simplified collision. Now, those are all going to be concave collisions, which means they can't have any vertices that go inwards of the other vertices, which this shape, it would not really work well for. So you basically have a straight uh, polygon from here to here. It wouldn't go in and then curve around. 
you can do an auto convex collision, which will um, allow you to have those convex shapes. And when you do that, you have a whole, uh, uh, whole vert and whole precision value you can change, but it's still not going to be anywhere near accurate enough to represent this level of detail. It just doesn't uh, work as well as the method I'm going to show you. Okay. So I'm going to close this out. <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this nanite mesh. So Control-D. It'll automatically sequence the uh, number value at the end of any file name. So let's change it to one. I'm going to change it back to the same file name, and then I'm going to do an underscore C. Now, this is going to be for collision, and this is just for the purposes of this example. You can obviously name it um, however you like. And I'm keeping the same uh, name that came in from the Quixel asset, which is here. Next thing I want to do with this asset, I'm going to right-click it. I'm going to go to Nanite, and I'm going to disable Nanite on the collision mesh, the one that we just uh, created from a duplicate. And what I'm going to do is drag this into my scene. I'm going to zero out its position, and I'm just going to drag it up a little bit. And if you hold Shift while dragging, you can actually move the camera with it. Okay. So this is our mesh. You can see it in our scene. It has an uh, open bottom. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to re, uh, basically weld the seams on this. We're going to reduce the poly count, and then we're going to close the bottom of it. And then we're going to utilize this as our collision mesh. Okay. So in order to do that, we're going to go into our, uh, up here where it says selection mode, I'm going to change this to modeling. Modeling tools should be enabled by default in the latest version of Unreal Engine. If they're not, you can go over to Edit, Plugins, type in Modeling, and then check the box for Modeling Tools Editor Mode. It says beta, but it has been enabled by default in the latest versions of Unreal Engine that I've been using. So once you're in the Modeling Tools here, you want to go over to Mesh. And the first thing we want to do is Weld. So welding is basically going to take any of the mesh seams that currently exist and weld them together. So essentially, all these uh, polygons for this mesh, uh, the vertices, are all touching each other, but they might have separations in the mesh from how they were authored originally. This can be due to many different factors, but what we want to do is weld those seams so there are no separations, because when you do the simplification using this method, it will basically start separating those seams when the polygons get reduced. You do have a bunch of values you can change here, but we don't have to change any of that. So um, as you can see, it was doing something at first, and then it outlined these seams for me. So it's basically analyzing the mesh. These blue lines you see are going to be the seams of the mesh that it's going to weld. So I'm just going to hit Accept. It's going to weld the mesh. Now, once again, keep in mind, I'm not skipping anything in this video. I'm not speeding up. I'm not doing any of that. So you can see the real-time um, uh, process for how long all these computations take. And once again, it will vary depending on your machine and uh, you know a bunch of other factors and all that stuff. But they should be roughly uh, similar on most high-end gaming machines. OK, so it's done welding. So the next thing I want to do is go in and simplify our mesh. So you see over here, uh, still under this mesh section of the modeling mode tools, you'll see simplify. It's a little triangle with or a polygon with a uh, minus next to it. I'm going to click on that. So what it's going to do is it's going to analyze the mesh to start with. It'll take it a few seconds usually to do this. And then it is going to finish analyzing the mesh while we can go in and start changing these settings. Now you'll see by default, um, it's got these values here. As long as you see these blue lines sliding across it and it's lit up this way, this means it's uh, doing the process on it, right? So it's done the process. Uh, by default, it's automatically going to reduce it 50% of the original poly count, right? So we're basically at a, a million polys. But what I want to do is manually enter a poly count. Now, I'm going to do uh, two stages for this just to show you how much quicker things can be if you combine techniques. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to triangle count. And I'm going to set a triangle count of 20,000. Right? So uh, I'm going to hit Enter on that and uh, let it do its thing. So now it is processing. That's what this means. So what I'm going to do after this, I'm actually going to take this into the mesh editing tool again and then do the poly reduction from there down to 10,000 polys because from 20,000 to 10,000 polys is going to be a very, very quick uh, reduction using that tool. Plus, it will allow us to go um, lower than we would have been uh, able to originally if we had just done like 1% of the high poly mesh. Okay, so now this is a 20,000 poly mesh. All right, you can see the wireframe for it. I'm going to hit Accept. Now, if I hover over this mesh, you can see the new poly count is 20,000 polys, which you can see about a third of the way down this pop-up. Now, I'm going to double-click it. Actually, I'm going to save first, just so we don't have to, just in case there's a crash or anything. You never know. Um, I'm going to load this up by double-clicking on it. You can see our poly count up here, 20,000 polys. 
So now what I want to do is I'm going to reduce this down to 10,000 polys. So I'll show you our um, wireframe. I'm also going to get rid of this grid so you can see a little more clearly. So this is our current density at 20,000 polys. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here to our LOD zero, our percentage triangles, and I'm going to set this to 50%, which will drop us down to 10,000 polys. So I'm going to hit 50% uh, in here. I'm going to hit enter. Once I hit enter, you'll see that apply changes is now available. I'm going to hit apply changes now. And now it's down to 10,000 polys. So you can see how quick that process was. Once again, I didn't speed anything up, didn't fast forward the video, that was all in real time. So you can see how much more uh, quickly this works uh, when it's a lower poly mesh. Anything around like seven, 800,000 polys, it usually reduces fairly quick using this tool. But when you're in the millions of polys, it just takes a very long time. So it's better to use the uh, other tool that I just showed you, and then you can combine it with this if you want to. Or in this other tool uh, that I showed you a minute ago, you could also just enter in 10,000 polys for your target. But I just wanted to show you that. So now if I go into our density, this is our 10,000 poly mesh. Now, since we've already done the reduction, I can type 100 back in here and then hit apply. It'll just, it keeps those values stored. It knows what the original mesh poly count was. So it's not actually recalculating, it's just reloading it. So you can see the density at 20,000 and then hit apply changes. It still will keep the 50,000 because it already did the calculation on this. So it's just swapping again. So we hit apply. That's our 10,000 poly mesh. Now we can reduce this even farther. Once again, it's kind of up to your discretion based on the mesh that you're building for how you want to do this. Okay. So I'm going to save that. Okay, so now we have our 10,000 poly mesh here. Now the last thing we want to do is close the hole on the bottom. I usually prefer to do this once we've reduced the mesh uh, down to its lowest level. So now inside the mesh tool, we want to go into fill holes. Now it's going to do a red outline where the hole um, edges are. So if you click on that, it will automatically close that hole. All you have to do is hit accept. So now we have a mesh that actually has thickness, right? So the reason you want to do this is if you just have an open bottom mesh and you're doing collision on this, let's say it's a simulation or particles or whatever, there's a tendency for those particles to slip through it because the mesh does not have uh, density. So for example, the tick rate or the frame whatever drops and there's a, a, a screen space uh, calculation for depth or surface base, whatever it is, it might miss the fact that it actually hit the surface because it goes through it before the next tick happens. So if you have density, it'll catch that uh, most, uh, much more often and, and it won't pop through the mesh like that. Okay? So it's always good to have a closed mesh for your uh, collision. Okay, and then uh, closing the bottom there, it bumped up the poly count a little bit. So we can go back and reduce that now if we want to. So I'm going to drop this back down to 50%. Yeah, that's fine. There's still a little over 10, uh, 10,000 polys, but that's fine. And once again, the reduction, the actual reduction amount is going to be um, up to your discretion based on your asset that you're creating collision for. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is load up our original nanite mesh. And over on the right side, I'm going to go into collision. So um, by default, if I go in to show simple collision, you're not going to see any collision because it doesn't exist. If I go in here and create, let's just say a quick sphere, you can see that's our simple collision, um, and that's what it looks like. Now you can just hit delete to get rid of that sphere with it highlighted, or you can go into collision and click on remove collision, which we're going to do here. So I still have show simple collision enabled. If I show complex collision, once again, that's just going to be the original polys of the mesh itself. So what I want to do is I'm going to go over here, and under complex collision mesh, under collision in the mesh editor, I want to select our mesh. Now I could just drag and drop it in here if I want to, or I could click this little arrow, or I, from the drop down I could search for it, right? So I'm just going to drag it in here. Okay. So now our complex collision is using that mesh that we just reduced. So this is our 10,000 poly mesh, but it's not being used as our simple collision yet. In order to do that, the last thing you want to do is go to collision complexity and change this from project default to use complex collision as simple. So now it is using complex collision as simple. This is our complex collision mesh. So it is now using that as our simple collision. Okay, and once again, um, this is a closed bottom mesh and it is going to work how you'd expect it to. All right, so that is how you generate much higher quality, um, lower poly, uh, simple collision meshes based on your original mesh that are going to be much more accurate than using any of the other tools um, in Unreal Engine or you know without having to use uh, third-party tools and it's very very fast if you went through that whole process on your own
without having me uh, talk through it. Um, you can have done it uh, probably about a third of the time of this video, if not faster. All right, hopefully you found this useful, and I will be uploading more videos in the not-too-distant future.